Hello YouTube, hope that your weeks are all going well wherever you are tuning in from. So three and a half years ago I made a video on why French people don't get fat. Now this is a topic that's a big, big uh, source of interest and fascination about the French culture. Really, um, there's a lot of articles, books, how can we achieve that effortless French style where they don't calorie count, they don't exercise and yet they manage to stay so thin. And at the time, with my level of cultural observation, I gave my best response to these kinds of questions that I could. And so my conclusions were drawn off, you know, my perception of what was happening, what I was able to observe. And of course, at that level, you're tapping into things like habits and behaviors that you see around you, right? So you have things like, oh, their meal portion sizes are smaller, or, you know, they like to cook at home more often than not, or they're really good at self-control and knowing when to stop and knowing when they've had enough. And all of those things are true. However, it's almost a surface level of observation, right? Because now that I've had time to process, now that I've had conversations, now that I've really had time to think about what it is about French and their weight and how they do stay so slim, I realize that there's a cultural element that's deeper than that. It's very much rooted in the level of their identity. Okay, so I want to, in this video, take you through my theory for why French people don't get fat. And of course, you know, the first comments underneath this video are going to be like, well, I know a French person who's overweight and that kind of thing. I'm just talking, looking at the statistics, uh, French people have the lowest levels of obesity in Europe. Uh, French women are the thinnest in all of Europe. And France is the only country in Europe where more than 5% of females specifically are underweight. So there definitely is something to it. I'm just talking about globally, if you're looking at the statistics, French people just simply do not put on weight or weigh as much on average as other people in Europe or the world. Now, just before I dive into this rather spicy video of mine, I did want to thank our epic sponsors of this video, Lingoda. They are actually doing something that they've never done before at the moment, which is a two month sprint promotion. And this is super cool. It means you go hard, learn a language of your choice. You can do either English, French, business, English, German, or Spanish. You go hard for two months or 60 days and you can get up to a 100% cashback. So sorry to alarm you, but there are only four months left of this year. So if you do not want another year to go by where you haven't advanced your language goals in a way that you would have liked to, then this is a really great deal. Essentially, the Lingoda Sprint is a really intensive language learning challenge. You can either take 15 classes per month for the two months and get up to a 50% cash back, or you do the Super Sprint and you take 30 classes per month for the two months and you can get up to a 100% cash back. I know that over 40,000 people have taken part in the Lingoda Sprint. Loads of my subscribers have. I used Lingoda myself, of course. So as you may know, I use Lingoda to take my French from level B1 to C1 and I really love them because they're completely flexible. You can learn online, you learn over Zoom. Uh, there are classes 24 seven with native professors and you're in very small groups. So the average class size is just three and there's a maximum of five and the professor really provides lots of concrete examples and really brings the lessons to life. There's heaps of interaction and fun exercises. It really is very, very cool. So if you are interested in signing up to Lingoda's first ever mini sprint, the registration period is open until September third only. The sprint starts on September 7th and goes all the way until November 5th. If you sign up before the 25th of August, you will just pay a 49 euro deposit to secure your spot. Of course, that is part of the refund if you do qualify for that cash back and you fulfill the competition rules, and then you just pay in two monthly installments. If you sign up after August 25th, then you'll just pay the first month up front and then month two and month two. Either way, I will not leave you hanging. You can use the code ROSIE20 and you'll get 20 euros either off that deposit or off your first month. So if you are keen to sharpen up those language skills of yours, definitely check out the link in my description box down below and use code ROSIE20 to get your discount. Happy language learning. Alrighty, so why don't French people get fat? Why don't French women get fat? This is what people are Googling. There are literally millions of search hits for this topic. And you know, trigger warning, I will be talking here about diets, about weight. So if any of those topics make you feel anxious, less of them, then you definitely don't wanna be watching this specific video. Now, at the end of the day, this is the real reason. This is the tea. This is the honest truth about why French people don't get fat. And the fact is, is that they don't get fat because it is so unacceptable. unacceptable. Because putting on weight in France feels like crap because the moment you put on a few kilos, you will start to get comments from your friends, your family, 
your colleagues, your doctor, they will be commenting on what you're eating. They will be commenting on how you're changing shape, how your jeans are looking a little bit tight. You'll never ever be able to get away with gaining weight in France without it being a thing. And if it goes on and gets to the level of, you know, being really overweight or obese, um, it can be pretty socially ostracizing in France. So the thing you have to know about the French culture is that it's very socially acceptable to comment on other people's bodies and other people's weight because they feel like they're doing you a favor. Firstly, you've got to think about the context. And to be fair, I was in Paris, um, but people are talking about weight and what they're eating all the time. They're always talking about, you know, what they're having for lunch, how they feel guilty because they've eaten that snack or um, they had such a big lunch because they had salad and some bread. So for example, it may start off and it's like little microaggressions all the time. So for example, if you're in the workplace, and to be fair, I was based in Paris, but it would be very usual for colleagues to comment on what the other is eating, uh, to faire attention, like be, be careful with what you're eating because that, that mousse au chocolat there, that has a lot of calories and it's very sweet. Or they'll comment on like, oh wow, that's a really big plate. Or oh, I don't know how you ate all of that. I couldn't eat so much at midday. These kinds of things. Some people are also commenting on themselves a lot. They say French women never go on diets, but I think they live their whole life on a diet, right? I think they're constantly, you know, I'd be like, oh, how was your holiday? And be like, oh, it's great, my gain two kilos. So oh, I'm just gonna have soup uh, for dinner for the next few weeks, just try to, you know, get back to where I was, like get back to equilibrium basically, which is fine. Like, but let's not be under the assumption that French women don't look after their weight and don't try really, really hard to maintain their silhouette. It's not just your colleagues, it's also very socially acceptable for your parents to call you out, for them to suggest that you skip that dessert, for them to call you out and, and give you a, a shot to look if you order a second helping of fries, like, there's this almost social regulation going on all the time. But if you're French and you're watching this and you don't feel like you can relate, it may be because it's just so ingrained. It's just so normal, because this is happening many, many times a day. Comments on what you're eating, how much you're eating. It's kind of like a game of self-control, like the one who has the most self-control and eats the least in anyone serving wins, or at least that's how it can feel in Paris. A friend could actually come up to you in a party and ask you, hey, have you gained weight or are these jeans just really unflattering, right? And the attitude from the French would be like, I'm asking them in their own interest, right? I'm asking them, it's doing them a favor. But I guess something that the French need to kind of understand, I think, is that we all know if we've gained weight, right? Like if we've gained a few kilos, like it's our body, I'm pretty sure we know that we've gained weight. So them commenting on it isn't helping us, it's just shaming us, which isn't a very nice feeling whatsoever. And I have to be honest, I've been horrified at the amount of comments that I get every single day on this YouTube channel, uh, commenting on my weight and my appearance, um, from attention les gâteaux, beware of cakes, um, to Oh, elle a pris 40 kilos, she's, she's gained 40 kilos, that kind of thing. It's just absolutely been horrendous and it's so off the mark, to be honest. And there's just this real entitlement, I think, for French people to comment on your body and comment on your weight as if they're helping. Now, I don't want to just talk about my experience, but also share some experiences of actual French people as well. So here are a couple of comments that I've just pulled from my videos. I have hundreds and hundreds that sound exactly like this. As a French woman living in Ireland, I'm so happy this video was made. I grew up with constant scrutiny around my weight, from family to complete strangers. I never actually had a weight issue, as they would call it. I was a thin kid and then put on a bit of weight with puberty and young adulthood, as a lot of people do. But I was treated like any fat I had was something to get rid of. My mother, who sees herself as a staunch feminist, never saw the irony in how she played into society's pressure on women to be thin. When I lost a lot of weight because I starved myself for months, becoming unhealthily skinny during a bout of depression, my Irish friends were worried about me. Whereas my French friends and family reacted collectively as, it's too bad you were depressed, but at least something good came out of it, speaking about my weight loss. That only helped to make me more depressed. My cousin, who's a bit more curvaceous than I am, was mercilessly bullied about her weight by most people in my family, with some of the men in my family being the worst offenders. I can without a doubt say that while attitudes around weight are not perfect anywhere, Ireland is so much more accepting. Moving to Dublin was a breath of relief in that regard, and no Irish person has ever made me feel like I was lesser than when I wasn't stick thin. I can really relate to this comment because I feel so much more comfortable in New Zealand being whatever size I am and knowing that people aren't harshly judging me and just feeling really sorry for me or thinking that I look really bad. Um, it's an awful feeling walking around feeling like you're being thought of in that way. And I have to admit, it does give me a bit of anxiety about going back to France um, because I do know what will be going through people's heads and I don't really want to see like the I feel sorry for you look in people's eyes. Um, when I go back and friends and family are kind of acting concerned and stuff. Like on one hand I get it, like people who care about you want you to be healthy and that kind of thing, but when those looks are coming from complete strangers, it does feel really crap. Here's another one. 
I'm Spanish and I've been living in France for seven years in the southeast and southwest. When I arrived, I had a very average size, but a couple of years later, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism after putting on 15 kilos in a very short time. I've had problems with several doctors who said I was just eating too many croissants and pan au chocolat and sugary things. Surprise, I don't eat them, although I love them. And they refused to believe me and made me feel like crap, saying it was all my fault. So yes, France is the country of very slender people, and if they're not, they better be a man, which is far more socially acceptable. Just a comment here as well, it's also in the health professionals, right? And I, I actually had this a lot. Um, I went to the doctor when I started gaining weight over in France, and I needed to get my hormones tested and my thyroid tested as well. And I'll never forget, like, the doctors are just like, huh, you need to stop eating those pan au chocolat, uh? Like, and you need to do more sport. You really, like, that, that's a constant thing. They'll give you a prescription for Dolly Prime and doing more sport. <laughs> that's their answer to everything. Um, it's very rare that they would allow a medical issue, like uh, anything from depression to hypothyroidism to anything like that, be an excuse, quote unquote, for weight gain. Uh, for them, it's always a problem with your diet and you're not exercising enough. It's, so it, very, it always places the blame back on your lifestyle. Chloe says, I'm a 32 year old French woman living around Nice and I've been struggling about my weight and body image forever, except the two years I lived in New Zealand. I felt so confident because of that when I was in New Zealand. Nobody cares there and it felt so good. Yeah, I mean, that's related to what I was saying before. When we've got a different social thermostat about what big is and what socially unacceptable sizes are, and it's just so much more relaxed and people aren't judging you and they don't, they don't really care, like you do you, um, however, like, however you want to live your life kind of thing. Uh, I can't imagine the anxiety and stress and pressure it must, you must have as a French woman to continuously look thin and feminine and, and be sort of perfect, right? And I remember um, when French women at L'Oreal would go on maternity leave to have a baby, it, the topic of conversation in the office was so often like, I wonder how long she'll uh, take to lose the weight, you know? And then if they'd come back and they'd basically be exactly the same size as they were before they got pregnant and they'd come back after three, four months after having a baby and they were just so praised and they're just well done, well done on losing the weight. It was just like the, the most important priority post birth. And this is what Skylia says. French girl here. I've recently started working for a company in Paris, my first real job, and my team and manager's attitude towards food and body image has been such a negative experience for me so far. I completely relate to the comments of you don't always have to take the cake. At lunch, my coworkers talk about diet, health, and everyone is commenting on what everyone is eating all the time, even doing their own auto critique like, oh, I'm having cake today, but it's all right because I'm going to the gym tonight. It's unprompted. They're all really just justifying their meal choice every day to the rest of the group, and I can't handle it. Before the starting this job, I lived in several foreign countries. When I came back, I needed a bit of time to get used to the French meal schedule again, which works great for me, but obviously I can't instantaneously change my eating habits after years abroad. It must be even harder for an expat who didn't grow up with it. On my first day, I got a comment on my eating habits. Recently, I've had some health problems and lost quite a bit of weight. I've been struggling with it because although I think I look better now, it's, I know it's not natural weight loss and I'll gain everything back once I recover. I'm getting really tired of my coworkers comments about how much better I look and praising how little I eat. The other day, I kind of snapped at one male coworker who was like, oh, you're eating again, I see. And I was like, yes, Brandon, I'm eating again. I'm sick and I need proper nutrition. I'm not accepting any feedback right now on my eating habits and appearance. It's frankly none of your business. Growing up in Paris and Bretagne, I didn't think my weight would ever be an issue in the workplace. I thought I was past middle school bullying. Turns out it's much more low key and rampant than I imagined the problem would be. I hope anyone who's struggling with these issues right now, especially in the workplace, feels empowered to tell their coworkers to quit it when they step out of line. Our body is ours and we owe no justification for the way we take care of it. Yeah, so this very much reflects the experience. I had constant comments, people commenting on themselves, people commenting on you, this kind of, as I said before, social regulation of how much you're eating, um, if you're gaining weight, if you're having a snack, people will comment on it because you shouldn't be eating outside of the three designated meal times. Very, very reflective of this. Um, again, it's this whole mass group thing around let's not let each other gain weight. And then this comment, I have a lot of French friends and I notice they tend to make fun of fat people behind their back, like quelle vache, which means what a cow. Um, elle a besoin d'un régime, she needs to go on a diet. Much more than here in Canada, where fat shaming is a social taboo. I think it may have to do with the French culture of political incorrectness and sarcastic sense of humour. Yeah, I mean, this is true. There's a lot of judgmental, snarky, uh, quite frankly, bitchy comments made about other people's bodies all the time in France as well. So of course, when you're growing up, you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. So you do everything you can in your power to not gain the weight, right? And so also it's easier to just maintain your weight. So if you get one or two kilos out of line, you can easily bring it back. And so French people as well, because they, they don't gain the weight, they don't have to lose it. And we all know if you've ever had to lose weight, losing weight is incredibly tough, right? It's not natural for the body to lose weight. Um, it thinks that it's it's going into some sort of survival mode. It feels um, it's really, really tough for the body to actually to, to release 
uh, weight. And so, you know, they haven't had to go through that struggle because they don't let themselves get fat in the first place because if they did, it would be a living nightmare. So we've talked about it being socially unacceptable and I would go so far as to say that there's a real stigma around people who are overweight in France as well. I think uh, the idea here is that everyone is born thin and that being fat or anything larger than just medium sized body is your fault and everyone else's business. I was actually reading an article written by a French woman who is you know, clinically obese and she was writing about her experience of that living in France as a French woman. Um, and she says that being fat is thought to be like a grotesque self-inflicted disability in France. Those were her exact words. And there's actually a thriving gastric band surgery industry in France, um, more than 50,000 per year, which is a huge outlier in spite compared to any other European country, which just goes to show as soon as it may be heading towards obesity, it's like we've got to fix this in with the gastric band and you, you go and have an operation to get on top of it. So yes, there are lower portions. Yes, you cook at home. Yes, you buy lovely fresh ingredients from the markets and all of those very very romantic things but at the end of the day I think it's something around that extreme self-control gets socially reinforced and you get rewarded for not going too far with your eating it's pretty much as simple as that and you know taking more than you need is obviously very negatively reinforced and again if you're French watching this I don't necessarily expect you to understand or get it because it's one of those things where you've grown up in a, in a bubble and you've been positively and negatively reinforced for something your entire life it's going to be very very difficult uh, you know it's, it's difficult to read the label when you're in the jar so in France food is seen as a necessity Okay, not a craving, not something to do for enjoyment or out of an emotional need. Slenderness equals physical and mental control, which is very highly rewarded and praised. And so socially, this shows up as, you know, for example, um, here in the culture, when you go on a road trip, half of the thing that you're looking forward to when you're going on your road trip is what snacks you're gonna eat with your friends, right? Like the lollies, the chips, the coke, you get all sorts of stuff and have treats and really enjoy that as part of a road trip. If you go around to a friend's house for a sleepover, same deal, you want to have a bit of a blowout, right? You wanna get the chips, the chocolate, watch shitty movies and that kind of thing. And so that social element doesn't happen in France because French people would find that like horrendous, right? That wouldn't be enjoyable to them. That would be a source of deep, I think, shame. And I think this also goes to explain why Parisians are thinner than the national average as well. A lot of people blame the smoking and the walking. And, you know, to be honest, like walking, yeah, it's great, but even you'd have to walk nonstop for an hour to burn 230 calories, which is the equivalent of an avocado or an apple. Okay, so I'm not sure we can put it all down to walking. I think it's because the social thermostat of what's acceptable in terms of size and food portions is even lower. And I did notice this in workplaces as well. It was kind of like a competition of who could eat the least. Anyways, I know that this has been maybe a bit of a controversial video. Um, I would like to hear about your thoughts down below. I haven't seen a lot of content online tackling uh, this issue from this perspective. I do think um, as the world starts to shift towards body positivity and embracing you know plus size and all of that kind of thing i do think that france is going to take a lot longer to get there if it ever does um we have to remember that the medical the french medical professionals are very much ingrained like this as well uh, for example if you gain more than nine kilos during an entire pregnancy you're basically a failure um, and they start fear-mongering with you saying that you're going to give your baby diabetes um you know it's just it's just so 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 ingrained in the culture so i'm not sure where or how it's going to go from here um for them it's very much a black and white health issue it couldn't possibly be uh, for any other reason than your own fault and your own habits and they have every single right to comment on those so very very uh, specific cultural element here would love to dissect would love to unpack would love to discuss if you're French watching this and you have related in some way would love to hear more about your story and otherwise thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you here next week on the Not Even French YouTube channel. A bientôt!